What's going on everyone? Today we are back and we are going to do another interview questions and answers video. Today we're going to cover a system engineer role or a third level support engineer role or Wintel engineer role, whatever you would sort of call it wherever you're from. I'm going to give you some questions that I have been asked when I've applied for system engineer roles and I'm also going to give you some questions that I usually ask system engineers in their interviews. So I'm going to give you sort of a bit of a bit of a mix of both sides, so the interviewer and the interviewee, and I'll give you a bit of a breakdown of what we generally ask and what we ask for. As usual, I won't give you the answer exactly. What I'll try and do is lead you to the answer or sort of tell you what the interviewer is looking for at that point. But whatever it is, I'm gonna try and give you a hand with your interview. Let me know how you go in the comment section below. And if you do wanna see some more videos that are similar in nature, so IT things, cloud related things, smash the subscribe button. And as usual, smash the like button like you're gonna smash your interview. So basically, whether you've applied for a Wintel engineer role or a third level support engineer role or a system engineer role or something around server support, uh, Linux support, Windows support, something around that, you're probably going to be asked some of these questions. So some of these questions I uh, have been asked in interviews and uh, was maybe at the time a bit thrown by them. And what I'm going to point out is that a lot of these questions are actually just looking for how you would answer them. It's not necessarily looking for a right or wrong answer, maybe just showing the interviewer how you get to a certain answer or how you go through the troubleshooting steps. As a support engineer, you're probably going to be doing a lot of BAU. Actually, that's all you're going to be doing, BAU. So tickets that come up, resolving issues in server environments or with user environments on, on application servers, etc. So let's start. So one of the most important things that you're going to be supporting is Active Directory. So a very simple question is, what is Active Directory? So an interviewer will ask you, what is Active Directory? And you'll be asked to describe what it is. So it's easy to say that it's a Windows Server service and it's something that you install on a Windows Server and talk about domain controllers and whatnot. But really what they're looking for you to describe is what it actually is. So it's a directory. It's got users in it. It's got groups in it. It's got objects in it. It's got policies in it. So basically giving the interviewer a bit of an understanding that you know what Active Directory is and its usefulness in the environment, in the IT environment, that's what they're looking for. Giving them a very brief description, so something like Active Directory is a user and object directory where we can sort of manage all of the objects and objects being users, computers, groups, etc. Where we can manage all of those in one sort of area, in one sort of in one service. So Active Directory may give us the ability to do things like group policies or group users together in security groups or distribution lists, etc. That's the type of thing that they're looking for. So maybe not such a textbook sort of answer, not something that you would read straight out of the you know, Microsoft documentation. What is Active Directory? Next question is, what is DHCP? So it's good if you can actually tell them what DHCP stands for. I remember when I was going through my interviews, I'd always try and remember, I'd always try and remember what the acronyms mean. And then I'd also try and remember an example of where I've used it or where I've had an issue with it or where I've had a ticket for it. Something along those lines. So for example, now if someone asks me what DHCP is, I will tell them it's a dynamic host configuration protocol. I think I got that right. But more importantly, what I do is I give them an example of what it is. So I will tell them it serves out IP addresses, it helps a device sort of apply the correct configuration to its network settings, and basically that it sort of gives the devices on the network an address when they first come onto the network or an IP address. And then maybe you can get into it a bit more and give them a bit better example of how it's used. And maybe I would also go and tell them what happens if the HCP is not available. So it's always a good idea to try and relate it back to what you have seen in the past. So maybe like a scenario or a ticket that you've resolved or a ticket that you've had in your queue for some sort of um, issue with DHCP, like a device not getting an IP address or a switch not having IP helper configured or something like that. Anything like that where you can sort of elaborate on their question is great. They always, even as an interviewer, I will always really look upon that very well because it's speaking from experience. It's very hard to speak off the top of your head if you don't have an example. What is DNS? So that has come up in pretty much every interview I've had for a system engineer role actually. What is DNS? So 
what is DNS? What does it stand for again? Domain name system. That's right. So what is DNS? And a system engineer or someone who's had some experience as a system engineer will always know that it's always DNS. Every problem is always DNS. The question will be around what is DNS? So what is it actually used for? It's good to tell them the acronym again, so domain name, name system, but what's more important is that you tell them what it does. So basically it gives a friendly name to an IP address. I mean, that's that's one of the easiest ways that I can describe it to you. Rather than having to remember an IP address of a server, we use a DNS name. Rather than using an IP address for connecting an application to a database, we'll use a DNS name rather than an IP address so that we can then change it or um, be able to change the IP address behind that DNS name or something along those lines. So maybe give an example of that Maybe even better, give an example of when you've come across some sort of device that's using an IP address to connect to another device and then that IP address has changed and how that could have been resolved if you were actually using DNS. That would be a really good example and I would be very impressed if someone said that to me. What is a ping and what protocol does it use? So this is a bit of a tricky question. So as you might know, ping actually uses its own protocol, ICMP protocol. So it's not here or there when it comes to TCP or UDP. But what, what I'm trying to look for here is whether you've actually used a lot of ping to troubleshoot things and whether you understand that you know ping is a very useful tool in sort of finding out if a server or a device or something is online. But there's also always caveats. So it's good if you can describe those caveats as well. So just because you can't ping something doesn't mean that it's down. It could be that there's a firewall. It could be that it's not responding to pings. It could be that the service is down or the service is blocked on the actual device itself. It could be many things, but I'm just trying to get an understanding of do you know what ping is? Do you know what it's used for? Do you know what round trip time is? Do you know how we calculate the latency? Those are the type of things that I'm trying to understand because it's as an engineer, as a, someone who's going to be a support engineer, you're going to be doing a lot of pings and you're going to be doing a lot of troubleshooting. So I want to understand, I want to make sure that you do understand that. How do you check if a port is open? There's plenty of ways you can check if a port is open. I'll give you one tip. If I'm interviewing for a Windows engineer or a server engineer with Windows background or if a senior engineer or something like that, what I'm looking for is something a bit different to Telnet. So when I first came into IT, all of the engineers around me were always using Telnet to actually test if ports are open, which is great and it worked, but we always would come across the issue where Telnet wasn't installed on the Windows server by default. So that we'd have all the time, we'd have an issue where we're doing some tests and then we find that Telnet is not actually installed. So I found that there was actually a tool in PowerShell or uh, Commandlet in PowerShell that does the same thing, test net connection. So I always actually use this as a bit of a sneaky question to see if someone can give me a different answer to Telnet. It doesn't have to be test net connection, but it's nice to see if someone uses something a bit different, something a bit easier like test net connection because PowerShell is already installed and usually has the command available for you. So I would love to see that. I don't mind if we hear some Linux answers. Um, I think it's net NCAT, NC, something like that in Linux, but uh, whatever it is, I'm just wanting to know if you know how to check if a port is open. And I might also ask you why you would check if a port is open. So I might say, for example, okay, now that you've told me how to check if a port is open, can you tell me why you would check if a port is open? Can you give me an example where you've done that in the past? And you can come back and tell me something like, yeah, we were setting up monitoring and wasn't working to a particular server so we wanted to know if the actual server could reach the monitoring probe or something like that. So speaking of testnet connection, another question I would ask a Windows engineer is what is PowerShell? So I want all the engineers that come to wherever I'm working at the time, I want them all to know what PowerShell is. When I was sort of moving through the, you know, the roles that I've had, and you can see that video in the card above. When I was going through those sort of roles, I found that a lot of the engineers who had been around a while had not been actually, you know, using PowerShell and they had not really bothered to learn PowerShell. So I actually went and I thought that it was a great idea because you could do so much from PowerShell without actually having to click through all these bunch of different dialogues and management windows, blah, blah. So I actually taught myself PowerShell with a book called PowerShell in 30 days of lunches or something like that. Anyway, I'll find that posted in the, in the section below and I'll also leave a card here somewhere. 
So I want to know that the engineers can use PowerShell. So if I ask you what is PowerShell, that's a very basic question. I would expect you to answer it very easily because you can tell me it's some sort of management or scripting tool that you can use in Microsoft Windows Server or actually any Microsoft Windows device. But more importantly, I'll probably follow that up with a question like what have you used it for? So give me an example where you've actually written a PowerShell script or you fixed an issue using PowerShell, or maybe you have just used PowerShell to diagnose an issue. Those are the type of questions that I'll be asking on the back of that question, what is PowerShell? So if you go and you study something, you know, like a document telling you what PowerShell does and what it's great for, that's great, but I'm also going to ask you a question about that as well. And I'm going to make sure that you actually have real life experience using it. And sometimes, you'll be able to get away with, you know, just getting away with a very vague answer. It really depends on the interviewer. It depends if that interviewer is very strong with their PowerShell skills or with their just in, you know, engineering skills in general, or maybe if they're just a manager that has a bit of experience but can't really deep dive into it. Sometimes it's just a matter of luck with the interviewer. What type of experience have you had in a certain software? So, as a Windows engineer or as someone who has been in a system engineer role for a while or something like that, it's very unlikely that all you're doing is supporting Windows Server. Unless you're in some massive environment where all you do is just do Windows Server type stuff, you're probably doing something like Citrix or Microsoft Azure or Microsoft 365 or supporting a VMware stack or supporting a Hyper-V stack something along those lines. So let's keep this a bit broad. What I'll ask for is I'll ask for any other type of experience that you have. So for example, I might say to you, what type of other experience do you have when it comes to server technology? So some, maybe something like VMware. And you will say, yeah, I have a lot of VMware experience. I've managed a 10 or 20 node cluster and we have been managing it in terms of patching, in terms of troubleshooting, in terms of maintenance. So then I'll understand that you have a bit of VMware experience and I might come back with you with some sort of question about VMware. So maybe I'll ask you, how have you done patching in VMware? Or maybe I'll ask you how you actually apply host profiles in VMware or how you might add a new node to VMware, or I might ask you the difference between thick and thin provisioning in VMware and ask you maybe a couple of scenarios that you might have troubleshooted in the past, but that'll be the general gist. So I'll try and capture any other knowledge that you have. So maybe you have some Citrix knowledge, I'll ask you some questions about Citrix, what is a delivery controller, licensing server, something along those lines. But if I ask and you return something, that I have some knowledge in, then I'll probably ask you another question based on that as well. So moving slightly away from technical, or still technical, but not very focused on technical, I might ask you some questions around ticketing or around some tickets that you've worked on. So a really good example would be, have you actually worked on any P1 or P2 tickets in the past? And if so, can you describe them to me? At this point, I'm really looking for real life experience. If you haven't worked on P1s or P2s in the past, it's fine, just say that. But if you say you have, then I expect you to be able to give me an example. So I expect you to be able to go and tell me, yes, I have had many P1s and P2s. One of them was about all printers being down on a Windows file and print server. And then I'll come back to you and say, okay, and how did you troubleshoot that issue? And how did you resolve the issue? And at that point, I'm not really looking for a right or wrong answer. What I'm trying to understand is how you troubleshoot and how you get to a certain point. So how do you get to the point of going from a service that's completely down, users calling you and saying that they can't print to a point where they're actually printing again. I just sort of want to understand the methodology you do for your troubleshooting and how you get there. And basically the knowledge that you will apply to get there as well. When it comes to the P1s, P2s, I might ask you a couple of those. So I might ask you one or two. I might ask you one about print. I might ask you one about a VMware environment being down or something like that, depending on what you've told me in the previous questions. I'll also ask you questions around SLAs. So, you know, coming from an MSP background, and you'll probably be applying at an MSP as well. Coming from an MSP background, I really need the engineers to understand what an SLA is. So I need you to understand that some customers have different SLAs to other customers, and when we need to make sure we apply the right priority to those customers, and to the right tickets and how to sort of differentiate between a P1 and a P2 and how you're going to sort of manage your time in the day so that the company as a whole meets all its SLAs. Just something a bit rough so that I understand that you know what an SLA is and why it's important. Okay, then I might actually move into some scenario type questions. 
and we might leave these for like the senior type of engineers or the engineers where we're looking for a bit more experience but let's break them down anyway so one of the very common scenarios that will play out and I've been asked this in interviews and I've also asked this in interviews. One of the most common scenarios that an interviewer will ask you is they'll say this. We have a customer who has a network, so an MPLS or a WAN or something like that, with 15 different branch sites and one head office. Every branch site has its own domain controller, physical domain controller on site. You come in on a Monday morning and all of the users at branch A are saying that it's taking them over four minutes to log in. So the window screen is sitting there and they're sort of loading, but they're not able to do anything. Once they are logged in, it's fine. There's no sort of other issues and no one else is complaining about any slowness or anything like that, but it's just a login process. We found that other branches, so branch B, branch C, they're not actually having the same issue. Where would your troubleshooting start and what would you do to resolve the issue? It might seem like the interviewer hasn't given you enough information at that point, but that's exactly the idea. What they're trying to look for, what I would be trying to look for, is your questions. We're hoping that you will come back and ask a few questions like, is there problems on this site? Is there problems on this site? You know, is it just happening when they log on? Have you checked this? Have you checked that? And we'll give you, feed you a bit of answers, but not too much. And then we'll just see where your mind goes. Again, there's not really a right or wrong answer at this point. I'm sort of just trying to understand how you are actually troubleshooting. So the methodology you are applying. I want to understand that you know you have the analytical skills to get to the resolution. There is something very obvious that we would love to hear and that is that it sounds like the domain controller on site is having some sort of issue and it might be reaching out to another domain controller. Whether you actually get there or not is not that important. It's more important that I you give me some questions back and that I give you those answers and that I sort of see your brain ticking and I see, I understand how you sort of picture the environment. I'm hoping at that point that you've drawn the environment in your head and that you can sort of understand what's going on and you ask me the right questions that will get you to the point of saying, oh, it's the on-premises domain controller. So as usual, I hope that was helpful and I hope you smash your interviews like you're going to smash that like button and smash that subscribe button. I hope that you guys land those roles that you've applied for. We'll see you next time.